The Illinois State Museum has one of the richest collections of Pleistocene fossils in North America. We curate one of the largest assemblages of American mastodons, the Boney Spring site, where we have 31 mastodons from a single site. The mount that we have on display in the Changes exhibit is actually the la largest American mastodon on record. This was excavated by museum personnel under federal contract in the 1970s. Recently, we redated that site and we dated that particular animal to about 13,600 years old. Uh, in the last 40 years, we've done a lot of research on mammoths and mastodons, and some of our curators have been world renowned experts in ancient elephants. The, the competing hypotheses for um, the extinction of these megafauna are people hunted them to extinction, they went extinct because of a cl changing climate. Uh, they went extinct because of a bolide impact or an asteroid impact somewhere over Canada, or they went extinct because of some sort of strange disease that wiped them all out. Uh, our data, our results actually suggest climate change probably plays a large role in it, but it may not be as straightforward of a role as simply the climate changes, so therefore the vegetation changes and these animals can't find enough to eat. What we're finding out is that the predators go away first predators actually disappear about 30,000 years ago in the Midwest. And then after the last glacial maximum when you had ice sheets into central Illinois, mammoths and mastodon populations actually take off. They're really successful to the point where they, you start seeing huge amounts of mastodons on the landscape and then you see a population crash. So one of the things that we are very interested in is looking at the individual lifetimes of a, mam a single mammoth or a single mastodon. And in order to do that, we're drilling tiny little holes into mammoth and mastodon teeth to look at chemical snapshots of that animal's life. So we can look at their diet, um, what they were eating, what time of year they were eating it, and then where on the landscape they were when they were eating that particular forage. And with those, we can actually look at what individual animals were doing through time and whether th that behavior changes as the climate changes or as people come onto the landscape or um, something else happens. So, so the research that we're doing on mammoths and mastodons is actually kind of important. If we look ahead to future climate changes and we look behind to climate change in the past, the last time that we saw the extent of temperature change that we are going to see in the next 150 years uh, was actually during the late Pleistocene. And so if we look at how those large animals um, adapted or didn't adapt to climate change in the late Pleistocene, uh, we can learn some lessons for how to, how to conserve and how to save uh, large animal populations in the face of future climate change.